Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good evening, this is Ronald Coleman. And Benita Coleman. Inviting you to join us again on the campus of Ivy College. And now... Welcome again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. Every college president, to be successful, must have some talent for improvisation. And all good improvising being compounded of memory, inventiveness, and facility, the possession of these qualities makes Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, Ivy's president, a gifted extemporizer. Just now, as his decorative wife, Victoria, enters the room, he's applying his knack for improvisation to the piano. Vicky, I didn't see you come in. Possibly I had my eyes closed. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have seen me if you'd had them wide open, darling. I came in behind you and just sat down. I would have known it. Because with your entrance, the room always lights up a little. Oh. <laughs> What were you playing? Oh, I haven't the slightest idea, my sweet. My hands were on the keys, but my mind was not. I suppose I play for the same reason that some men whittle or tie trout flies or, or doodle on blotters. <laughs> <laughs> and you not being here to look at, I was just giving my eyes a rest. From what, Toddy? From this book. Here. Hmm. Studies in graphology. Oh, Handwriting, yeah. A new hobby? No, I was checking various types of handwriting for a specific purpose. Uh, you note the bookmark? Well, quite a bookmark. A check for $2,500. You must have joined the Bookie of the Month Club. <laughs> <laughs> what horse was it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a dark horse. A horse of another color or a horse on me, depending on the viewpoint. Oh. And you'll notice that the check is typed out to mm. the Ivy Glee Club. The only handwriting is the signature. Mm. Abraham Smith. Who's he? Ah, that's what I'm trying to discover. But why does the Glee Club want to know who Mr. Smith is? Why don't they just cash the check with a happy little cry and say, Thank you, Mr. Smith, and go buy some mandolin picks? <laughs> well, that's, that's the problem. We want to thank the generous Mr. Smith, but we don't know who he is. Well, ask the Ivy First National Bank. They have the account. Well, the Ivy First National Bank states courteously but unequivocally that they cannot reveal such information. They intimated that Mr. Smith is a fictitious name used for charitable purposes. It was suggested, in bankerish terms, of course, that I let sleeping dogs lie, let well enough alone, do not stir up the mare's nest, refrain from looking gift horses in the mouth, and other assorted cliches to the effect that I should mind my own business. <laughs> but not to be rude, dear, why don't you? <laughs> well, officially, I'm going to. But unofficially, my curiosity is so aroused. There's somebody at the door, Tolly, uh, and I hope it's Ellery Queen or Charlie Chan or something. Uh, yes, I, I could use a little detective assistance <laughs> with... Yeah. Oh, well, Professor Warren, well, come in. Hello, Doc, Victoria. Hello. I was just passing by, so I thought I wouldn't. <laughs> Am I inopportune? I should say not. In fact, you can have a key to the front door any time you want it. Yes. Now, now, sit down, Professor, and let's settle a few world problems. Thanks, I will. Sit down, that is. But I'm afraid world problems will have to wait until... Ouch! What's the matter? What, what? Is there a spring loose in that chair? Nope. Seem to have sat on a book. I try to get all mine bound in limp leather. <laughs> Hey, studies in graphology. Yes. Who's going in for handwriting analysis? William is doing some detective work. Uh -huh. I just stand around smoking my pipe and being elementary like Dr. Watson. You know? <laughs> well, I'm finding it quite fascinating, Joseph. When you consider that an individual's handwriting is actually a projection of his personality, the, the result of... Hmm, I've just thought of something. Well, why stare at me? It's perfectly permissible... Even admirable for a college president to think of something now and then. <laughs> What's on your mind, son? Are you Abraham Smith? Who's Abraham Smith? The brother they didn't have room for on the cough drops? No. <laughs> no, and either you are an excellent actor or you're not the man I'm looking for. But it seems quite a reasonable idea. You're the only member of the faculty I know who's financially able and would be willing to donate $2,500 to a good cause under an assumed name. Well, thanks. 
But on the rare occasions when I perform any good works, I sign them Joe Warren. My credit in heaven is so overextended, and I got such a late start mending my moral fences that I can't afford to be un- modest. <laughs> What's this all about? Well, somebody's using that name. I've made a check out to the Ivy Glee Club, and William wants to find out who it is so we can thank him. Well, to give you a little background, the Glee Club was short of funds. They couldn't buy costumes or new musical arrangements for their annual tour. And then a mysterious Abraham Smith mounts his ballpoint pen and rides to the rescue with his check. Hmm. Let's see it. Hmm. You recognize the handwriting, Professor? Nope. But as one detective to another... You can rule out anybody in either the engineering, accounting, or medical departments. Not precise enough for an engineer or an accountant. And the first thing a medical student learns is to write so only an experienced pharmacist can read it. (laughs) I know. (laughs) But I I, I think obscurity in writing is demanded by the medical profession. Uh, you, You see, medical men quite properly for the safety of the public are conservative. Which is probably why, with the the foundations of medicine going back to the Phoenicians and the Egyptians, doctors have retained the use of hieroglyphics in writing prescriptions. It lends itself admirably to uh, to the abbreviation, an abbreviation which extends even to the gowns supplied to hospital patients. Oh, here we go again. These dreadful garments. <laughs> Originally designed, I'm sure, for victims of the Spanish Inquisition on their way to the stake. That they, they do have, I suppose, some utilitarian value to the practitioners of surgery. However, when you consider that the fabric of which a hospital gown is composed, a blend of cactus fibers and low-grade sandpaper, <laughs> diabolically compounded for the abrasion of both soul and epidermis, <laughs> would... would <coughs> Mm, how did I get here in the hospital? I mean, did I have a conversational accident? Yes, you did. You were struck by a runaway digression. You got any other guesses about Abraham Smith? This <laughs> office is someone familiar with college affairs. <laughs> and you, I thought, as a wealthy novelist. Oh, please, please. Just because I sold myself down the literary river and typed out 450 pages of fraudulent history and busty intrigue, don't go throwing my ill-gotten gains at me. Oh. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Let me see that check again. Do you have a hunch, Professor? Well, I could be wrong, but I think I've seen that typewriting somewhere. See that crooked W and that lopsided O? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Where did you it's... see it? Whose is it? I haven't the slightest idea. No. <laughs> but it was quite recently. Look. Can you spare this check for a few hours? Until tomorrow morning. I have to return it to the manager of the Glee Club, Tommy Thornhill. He seemed to think I might abscond to Guatemala with it. Well, I'll give it to Tommy, if you like. Uh, He has an early morning class with me. But I'll check this, and if I hit anything, I'll telephone. I'm finding graphology very interesting, Vicky. You see, see this example. You see that the high stem and the slim loop indicates a high regard for personal dignity. Uh-huh. Of course, if I were to comb the student body and the faculty for someone with a high sense of dignity, the search would broaden out to some 300 people. Now, on the other hand, take, take this sample here. Yes, yes. Now, where did I put this? You see the small B with, with the initial hook. Indicating an animated conversation list. Uh, do, do we know any... Uh, Vicky? Yes, dear. Yeah, I was listening, I was listening. A sense of dignity at 300 people. I heard... Yes, yes, darling. Um, yes. Combined with a strong Darvis in a no small permalift from the Cranivers. Or am I being muscle fright and Esther Brow? Mm, that's right. Couldn't be anything else. <laughs> uh, Victoria? Yes, dear? Come home, darling. All is forgiven. <laughs> No, 300 small bees. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie. I, I was looking for something. Have you seen my hairpins? Hairpins? Well, well no, I, I don't when think I... When I came in here, I had a little white cardboard box full of hairpins. I don't remember where I put them. Well, I think we can eliminate Professor Warren. His scalp is so bereft of foliage that hairpins would be tonsorially obtrusive. <laughs> oh, yes. It was exasperating. I had the box in my hand when you were playing the piano. 
And then when Professor Warren came in, I set the box down somewhere. Uh, uh Uh-oh. Well, if that's Professor Warren, tell him if he returns my hairpins, we'll ask no embarrassing questions. If he he can tell me who Abraham Smith is, I'll buy him a permanent wage. Yes. Hall's residence. Oh, yes, Professor, yes. You did? Who? Good heavens, you're joking. (laughs) Really? Well, thank you very much. Yes, yes, I'll keep you out of it. But, uh, Professor, I owe you a permanent wave. Uh, which do you prefer, poodle or hostel? <laughs> yes, I, I know. I'll explain it later. Goodbye. <laughs> how obvious the answer was. What? What? Um, and how readily I ignored the rules of graphology. How? After all, the high sense of dignity, the rapid conversation, of course. But Toddy, please. Um, uh, what, dear? Don't do this to me. Uh, do, do what, darling? What? Who was it? Mr. Wellman. Mr. Clarence Wellman. No. Yes. Why, it's hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> I take back a lot of things I've said about Mr. Wellman. Yeah, not all of them, just some. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But as Coleridge said... Think not of his errors now. Remember his greatness, his munificence. <laughs> Think on all the lovely features of his character. You know, let's not go mad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sherlock, the case is closed. The mystery is solved. And you can put, a, put on your smoking jacket and play your violin. Well, I'm sorry, Watson, but cases have been few and I gave my violin to the landlady in lieu of rent. <laughs> However, we still have the piano. <laughs> oh, my goodness, what's happened? Pins. What? Well, I remember now. I put them on the edge of the piano. They must have fallen in. Well, <laughs> well beauty's loss is music's gain. I, I rather like the honky-tonk effect. bringing you this presentation of The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. As we return to The Halls of Ivy, we find Dr. and Mrs. Hall discussing Mr. Wellman, who turned out to be the mysterious Abraham Smith who sent a generous check to the Ivy Glee Club. Tommy Thornhill, the Glee Club student manager, is also present. Dr. Hall is saying... Well, Professor Warren has the check, Tommy. He'll give it to you tomorrow. Yes, it was Professor Warren who discovered Mr. Smith's real name. How'd he do it, Mrs. Hall? And who was it? Obviously someone who is closely connected with the college, but I'm afraid we can't divulge either the method or the individual, Tommy. He evidently desires anonymity, and we must respect it. Okay, but we'd sure like to give him a few choruses of happy days. He got the glee club off a bad spot. Can't you even give me a hint, Dr. Hall? If I had just his last name and his phone number, I could figure the rest of it out myself. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. For, for one thing, a person who goes to such lengths to conceal his generous instincts would quite properly resent our prying into his identity, however much we would like to thank him. You see, Tommy, Dr. Hall places great emphasis on good manners. He says that our social machinery is oiled by courtesy. And that please and thank you are the three little squirts that keep it running. <laughs> I didn't say that at all. I merely but said I know, that. I know. I added the three little squirt bit myself. Just punching up your script, you know? <laughs> anyway, Tommy, when he can't thank someone for something they've done, it hurts him. It hurts me too, Mrs. Hall. And if Dr. Hall can think up some way we can show our appreciation without spilling any beans, we yes, certainly... Yes, thank you. I will. Well, sounds like you've got visitors, sir. I'd better run along. Oh, it won't be necessary, Tommy. I oh, think. Good evening, Doctor Hall, Mrs. Hall. Ah, oh, good evening, Mr. Wellman. My phone is. Oh, uh, I, I didn't know you. Mr. Had... Wellman, this is Tommy Thornhill, student manager of the Glee Club. Uh, Mr. Wellman, Tommy. Evening, sir. Evening, Thornhill. Uh, is this a business meeting? I mean, uh, am I interrupting? Or that is, I was merely. Not I was, uh... at all. Not at all, Mr. Wellman. Tommy was here to see if he could find some way of thanking a mysterious benefactor of the Glee Club. Uh, Mr. Wellman, some shy angel yanked us out of the red with 2,500 bucks, and we can't find out who he is to pen a gardenia on him. I told Thornhill that the donor's privacy must be respected, Mr. Wellman. Uh, of course, of course. Can't go snooping into affairs like that. Man wants to help somebody without any brass flags. I mean, uh, bands waving. Uh, uh, what I mean is that uh, 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 you say you manage the geek club, uh, glee club, uh, Thorndike? <laughs> Yes, I'm the student manager, Mr. Wellman, and uh, my name is Thorn Hill, not Thorndyke. Oh. 
Though it was spelled M-U-D until this check came along. <laughs> now I can get the show on the road, thanks to Mr. Smith. Mr. Uh, who? Uh, Smith, Mr. Wellman, the mysterious friend who sent the check. If I knew who it was, I'd give him a kiss. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Hall, I don't think it calls for any such emotional display. Uh, I mean, this Smith fellow, who ever he is, must be very... Bu- by, by the way, I'm an old glee club man myself, don't they? Yes, I know that, Mr. Wellman. I've seen your picture. Uh, you were a tenor, straw hat and a cane, uh, class of, uh, was it 1913? Uh, 1914. Matter of fact, uh, I was student manager myself. Had a rough time, too. No money, empty treasury. People seem to think we traveled on freight cars and ate grass. <laughs> <laughs> promises, promises, promises. Uh, wrote a song about it, in fact. Well, that's very interesting, Mr. Wellman. Then you probably know how much the club appreciates the generous Mr. Smith. Well, I'm glad to have... Uh, I mean, glad to have had the experience myself managing the club with no money, so... Uh, uh, yeah, yes, I suppose they might think well of this Smith. Don't know who he is, huh? I don't, but Dr. Hall says that Dr. He... Hall says it must be someone who was close to the college, or he wouldn't have known about the Glee Club's difficulties. Uh, very logical, very uh, good thinking, but I wouldn't be nosy about it. Uh, probably some sentimental old grad, more money than sense. Uh, by the way, Mr. Wellman, what was the song you wrote about getting all promises and no money? Uh, <laughs> that. <laughs> well, not, not a very good song, really. Uh, uh, corny, I believe, is the word. Uh, Mrs. Hall would know, yeah? I uh, called it Fair Weather Friends. Uh, with a full chorus and a good accompaniment, uh, it didn't sound too bad, but as a solo, well. <laughs> with, a, with some good music available, it was, it, it, it was like... Uh, like uh... Carrying coals to Porter. Uh, <laughs> well put, Mrs. Holly. Well, well put. <laughs> say, say, wait a minute. Uh, fair Weather Friends. Uh, the one that goes like this? Fair Weather Friends... Fair weather, oh, friends. Well, imagine anyone this remembering it. You know, it's a wonderful. old town. Where have you gone? Yeah, well, it's well, obvious, Tommy, why you're the manager of the Glee Club instead of a singing man. <laughs> <laughs> now, it takes a crow to find the corn for the rest of the birds, doesn't it, Tommy? <laughs> yeah, how did you know about this song? Well, when it looked like we were short of money for new arrangements, Mrs. Hall, we started going through the trunks for some oldies. Somebody came up with this fair weather friends, and it was great. Real barbershop stuff. Really? Well, you, you liked it, Fondyke? Yeah. Well, my goodness, I never would have well, imagined my song. Well, I'd like to hear the club sing it again sometime. Yeah. Sure, they'll be happy to do it for you, Mr. Wellman, if only by way of thanks. And maybe I'm a little... Thanks for what, Dr. Hall? Uh, oh, for, for, for writing in 1914 what looks like a nice hot revival in 1952, Mr. Wellman. Yes, yes. It, it's as good as a, as a donation. Yes. Oh, 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 yes. Uh, hmm, uh, 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 that. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, glad you could use it, son. Oh, we'll use it all right, sir. Well, uh, thanks, Dr. Hall and Mrs. Hall. Nice to meet you, Mr. Wellman. Good night, everybody. Good night, night Tommy. Tommy. Uh, fine boy, that fawn ball. <laughs> <laughs> Think of them. Digging up my song after all these. <laughs> fur weather, friends. Fur weather. <laughs> I wonder if I could remember the whole thing. Uh, uh, may I use your piano? Uh, certainly, Mr. Wellman, but you won't like it. It's, uh, it's just a lot of tune. Well, so am I. No, 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 let me see. Uh, Is that me, or is it the piano? <laughs> it's full of hairpins, Mr. Wellman. <laughs> hairpins? Well, of all of us, I knew you had your little eccentricities, Dr. Hall, but filling your piano with hairpins is hardly a very... <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, I didn't come here to discuss music. It's, it's about the First National Bank of Ivy. I'm a VP, as you know. It seems that uh, you called them trying to find out who sent that check to the Glee Club. Well, it seemed too bad that such a generous gesture should go unthanked, Mr. Wellman. So So I... you took it upon yourself to snoop and pry. If this mysterious uh, contributor, who, uh, whatever his name is... Ezekiel Smith. Abraham Smith. Uh, Mrs. If this mis... Oh. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Smith? Are you... You know... All the time? No, no, no. <laughs> no not all the time, no. And, and then don't... Don't blame your bank, Mr. Wellman. They gave no information. There's someone who will be very discreet recognized your typewriting, Mr. Wellman. But who? I, I mean, how? I, I thought I'd taken every precaution. I mean, well, even so, who had the effrontery to... I mean, look, well, when a man tries to remain anonymous in a thing like this, why does... Well, well, if, well, if his privacy isn't... Can't, can't be respected... Mr. Wellman. What is it, Dr. Hall? <laughs> Any... 
any prying or snooping which was done was my fault and mine alone. I simply couldn't bear the thought of such a helpful act not being acknowledged. Rest assured that your identity is known to only three people, Mrs. Hall, myself, and one other. None of us will divulge it without your permission. Now, with this assurance, permit me, on behalf of the college and the Glee Club, to express our very great thanks. Well, uh, you're sure nobody will... Uh, well, I mean, if uh, this doesn't get all over the campus and will... Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> now, how about tomorrow, Toddy? Uh, tomorrow? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Wellman... Now what? Um, yeah, but by way of a small celebration over having been financially rescued, the Glee Club is having a small luncheon tomorrow. At whose expense? Well, <laughs> it's a Dutch treat, Mr. Wellman, and you are the little Dutch boy who stuck his checkbook into the dike. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, uh, if I may have a minute's quiet, please. I did. Uh... Hey, fellas, if you don't mind, I'd like to see a few. <laughs> quiet, you lemonheads! That's um, a, a technique we haven't used at the Board of Governors, Mr. Wellman. Well, as chairman, I've made a note of it. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, the Ivy Glee Club has with it this noon two very good friends President Hall, a baritone with a steady job who is always welcome at any fish fry of ours. <laughs> and Mr. Clarence Wellman, chairman of the Board of Governors, to whom we owe a special debt of gratitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Hall, you, you, you said you wouldn't tell. I didn't. When it looked like we'd never get our pitch pipes off the campus, we went through the files looking for old numbers that didn't need new arrangements. And it was a song written years ago by Mr. Wellman that snapped up the repertoire. On your feet, gentlemen. And show him our top number for this year, as it was the top number, I'm sure, in 1914. Fair weather friends. My song. Take it, boys. Fair weather friends, fair weather friends, this is the lonesome of Still be 